Hi guys, in this episode we're going to be implementing a nonlinear support vector machine in Python. So here I have a Jupyter notebook and we're just going to be going through the code. So here I've imported warnings just to, so that we can ignore any warnings that pop up. We've also imported pandas to import our data. So here I've stored the data under the variable name star underscore data. I save the data under the folder project data. We can then do star underscore data dot head to display the first few rows of the data. If we run this here, we can see that we have all of these columns here. So this data here is related to stars. And our objective for today is to predict using this data here, whether or not a star is a pulsar star or not. And this is indicated by the target class. Zero indicating that, that the star is not a pulsar star and one indicating that it is a pulsar star. So this is a classification problem, which we're going to be trying to solve using support vector machines. To get an idea of the number of rows in our data set, we can do star underscore data dot shape. And if we run this here, you can see that we have 12,528 rows and nine columns. So we can then go on to do some data pre-processing. So first, let's check for any missing values using the following code here. We can see that the excess kurtosis of the integrated profile has 1,735 missing values and also some missing values for the standard deviation of the dm-snr curve and also the skewness of the dm-snr curve. So we can remove rows that contain missing values using the following code here. So we do in place equals true to remove these rows in place. So this essentially would remove the rows and then store the data back into the variable star underscore data. If in place is equal to false, which I think is the default value, so if we didn't have this here, we'd have to store the data under a new variable, so perhaps star underscore data underscore full. But here we just want to keep the data in star underscore data. So we can run this here and then check to see if the rows with missing values have been removed. If we run this here, you can see that we have no missing values. We can, we can also check the data types of each of our columns. And in this case, they're all float 64. And one thing to note is if we look at the columns running this code here, we can see that there's the space at the start of the titles here, apart from the target class. And we can remove this space by using this code here. Run this, you see that it's been removed. So here we convert the columns into a string using the .str function. We then use dot strip to remove any spaces at the start or at the end of the string. So next we're going to define our input and output data. So we define X as our input data and that's all the columns apart from target class. So we're just gonna be dropping target class. And we use one to indicate that it's on axes equals to one. That is we're dropping a column, not a row. We define Y to be our target class. Run this here. So with support vector machines, we want our data to be standardized so that each column has an equal weighting in calculating the hyperplane that classifies our data. So here I've imported the standard scalar from scikit-learn library, and I've just put it under the variable s underscore scalar. And here we're applying it to our input data x, and we want to store the results into a data frame. So we do pd.dataframe, and, and for this we define the columns to be the same as x. And we saw this data frame under the variable x underscore ss for x underscore standard scaled. So next we're going to split our data into training and test data. If you guys aren't too sure why, I'd recommend looking at the video on cross-validation. So here we're applying the train test split function, again imported from scikit-learn. So we do train test splits. We define our input data as the x underscore ss standard scaled. Uh, our output data y here we're selecting a test size of 25% and we're setting the random state equals to 42. By default, the data is shuffled before it is split to avoid any biases. And that's what this random underscore state is for to indicate the shuffling algorithm. So we're going to be starting off by implementing a linear support vector machine and seeing how that performs on the data. Here we import SVM from scikit-learn and we're going to be using the support vector classifier. Here we define the kernel to be linear and we set the cost equal to 10. So recall in the previous episode, with a larger cost, our support vector machine is going to try 
to avoid misclassifications since we're putting a big cost on misclassifications. And so this may lead to overfitting. And with a lower cost, the support vector machine is not as concerned with misclassifications as there would be a lower penalty on the misclassified points. So here we fit the support vector classifier to the training data. So if you run these three cells here, we've now fitted our linear support vector machine to our training data. We can evaluate our model using the F1 score. I plan in the next episode to go over the F1 score and other cluster evaluation metrics. But just know that the F1 score takes a value between 0 and 1, 1 being the best score and 0 the worst. So we can apply this to our test data here. So to apply this function, we need a set of actual values, which in this case is stored under y underscore test, and our predicted values. So I obtained the predicted values by using the predict method on our test data. So if we run this here, we can see that we get an F1 score of 0 0.872 uh, to three decimal places, which is quite good. So let's now try fitting a nonlinear support vector machine and comparing that to our linear support vector machine. And so for that, I changed the kernel to be, a, to be RBF, which stands for radial basis function. And I kept the cost to 10. We can then fit our support vector classifier with the RBF kernel to our training data and then check the F1 score. So we can see here that with a nonlinear support vector machine that is using the RBF kernel, we get a higher F1 score. So what we can do now is try to iterate over different costs and see the F1 score for different costs. So here I've created a list of different costs ranging from 0 0.1 to 1000 and then iterate over the costs. We're still going to be using the RBF kernel since we found that it performs better than the linear kernel. And we set, the, we set C equals to whatever the cost is in the iteration. So we'll start off at 0 0.1 and the next iteration go to one and so on. We then fit this support vector machine to the training data, we get a set of predictions, we check the score, and then we print the scores. So if we run this cell here, we can see for the different costs, the different F1 scores. So it turns out actually that a cost of 10 gives us the highest F1 score. If we wanted to, we could try a different set of costs that are near 10, since this gave us the highest F1 score. So, so perhaps from 10 to 15 and seeing the results. So that's pretty much it for this episode. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.